And hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Matt. I am from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Thank you for joining us here on YouTube. Be sure to check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for plenty more Royal Caribbean news, information, fun, advice, everything you need to have a great Royal Caribbean cruise. And maybe right now, since we're not really cruising, a great way to keep up with what is happening in the cruise world, RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Happy Monday, everybody. Every Monday, we are live right here on YouTube, hanging out with all of you, talking Royal Caribbean. And I have to start off by saying hello to everybody and a special hello to Jan Fagan, who started us off with an epic super chat. Woo! Off the bat, Jan Fagan writes, Hi, Matt. Have to start the evening by saying thank you. Can't wait for the group cruise on Harmony. See you in a Zoomie. I cannot wait for that, Jan. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the super chat. And yeah, we're uh, under a year away now. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. And I'm so excited to talk to all of you guys here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see so many friends in chat. Tony Diaz is here. Rebecca Wells is here. Kathy L is here. Gary Miola Jr. is here. Kim Oakland joining us here. Steve Cohen, hello and welcome. Baby Jugs, long time. Hey, Matt and friends, how is everyone safe and healthy? Baby Jugs, good to see you, my friend. Welcome back. Always a pleasure. We've got Stacey Lamp in the house. We've got Nick from Singapore, who actually has, you know what, guys? We're going we're gonna to go with Nick on this because I'm going to ask you guys, how many days till your next Royal Caribbean cruise. Nick has seven more days and he's actually going to go on his cruise. Like, I can't believe it. I am so jealous, Nick. But welcome, my friend. Good to see you here. Guys, type your countdown in chat. How many days to your next Royal Caribbean cruise? Maybe you don't have exactly the same chances as Nick because Nick lives in Singapore and uh, Quantum of the Seas will begin sailing tomorrow. Yeah. Michael S. in the house. What's up, Michael? After some shuffling, my next Royal Caribbean cruise is June to Bermuda on Freedom of the Seas. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I like that. Got a lot of countdowns going on here. Love that. Joe S. Hello. Earl Zybarth. Hello. James just YOLO booked Alaska 2021 per my advice. That's awesome, dude. Glad to hear it. Love that feeling you get. After you book a cruise, Brian Myers, hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Are there any rooms that will hold a family of five? There are. Uh, primarily, they are suites, Brian, and not all suites are available on the website. So if you want a room that can accommodate five people, you might want to speak to a travel agent. On top of that, um, there are other non-suite rooms on some ships, depends on the ship, of course, that can accommodate them. But uh, you're talking about, they're usually re refer or referred to as family staterooms. But the... I know what you're doing. You're doing exactly what you would do if you were going to a resort, right? You, you're booking a room for five, but as a, I would advise you something else to look at. Instead of trying to get everybody in one room, get two smaller rooms. You'll probably pay about the same price you would for that room that can accommodate five. You'll get an extra bathroom. Uh, you'll get separation from, I'm assuming, your kids. And uh, it's, it's a really cost-effective strategy for families to split up in multiple rooms rather than trying to put everybody in the same room together. It's actually not more that much more expensive. And like I said, if you're going, you know, maybe instead of getting one large suite, maybe you get two ocean view rooms or even balconies for that matter. It might not be that much more. Uh, let us see here. And Tim Gallagher says, Godspeed Quantum. Yes, I am super excited for this. I mean, Quantum already had one sailing. It was a, it was a shakedown cruise they did um, over the weekend. And I guess everything's okay on there. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm hoping to be able to share with you guys lots of coverage with what is happening with um, with with Quantum of the Seas here in the next couple of days. Michael Esser writes, is the Ultimate Family Suite price per person or one price for the suite? Uh, Michael, that's a great question. All Royal Caribbean rooms are priced per person. So it's the, the answer to your question is no, it's not like a flat price. And whether you put one person or 50 people, not 50, but, you know, five people in there at the same price. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. You pay a price per person. Um, the first two people pay the most, and then it kind of goes down from oh there. My God. We've got a super chat coming in. I don't know if that's big enough to see on the screen. We've got some new graphics here. Uh, cruise Addicts. Matt, thank you for the, being there for us cruisers, giving us hope and good vibes. Next cruise, Ovation Alaska. After that one cruise every two months. Nice. Cruise Addicts, thank you so much. And listen, what a great way to get back into cruising by going to Alaska. It's an amazing place. I'm, I'm still bummed. I mean, I'm, I'm bummed I missed all my cruises so far, but Alaska is awesome. Love that. 
Anthony Lawson, have they started any practice cruises yet? One, Quantum of the Seas in Singapore. We definitely know they have done a test cruise. That was done over the weekend because they're going to be doing uh, regular sailings with Quantum beginning tomorrow. That's in Singapore. Here in the U.S., I am not aware of any official test cruises, but, I mean, Royal Caribbean is really playing this close to the vest. I mean, if you look, try to find anything regarding Quantum of the Seas and the Singapore sailings from Royal Caribbean, you know, .com USA. I mean, there's just no mention of it, which is crazy. Graphics need to be a little larger. Let me work on that one second. I can, uh, I can make that work. That's not a problem. Uh, let's go for, um, let's try that. Yeah, that should do it. And I'm going to, there we go. Okay, that should work. Uh, Earl says, does the new cruise price include a vaccine for COVID? Outside of Singapore, Earl, the answer is no, at least not yet anyway. So, um, let's see here. Don booked Symphony from May 22nd, 2021. Nice. Did it work? I think I messed it up. But, uh, Brogan, thank you for the super chat. 153 days till my back-to-back -back on Harmony. When is Europe 22 deployment released? Uh, that is coming this week. There are so many things happening this week. My goodness. But yeah, this week, not sure uh, when this week, but it will be coming this week. Yeah, I'm not sure, Steve, why that didn't work. That's kind of weird because we, <laughs> I mean, all I did was change the size of it. Oh, oh. My God. there it is. I also don't love the, the placement of it. Is there any way I can move that? That's very annoying. Uh, thank you, Brogan, again for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, very, very kind of you, sir. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Becky Mankin, what is going on? Welcome, Becky from MEI Travel. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Hope everyone's doing all right out there. And I appreciate you guys coming in here hot this evening, hanging out with me uh, on, on here. Thomas D. Group Cruise Info Site, royalcaribbeanblog.com slash uh, events. royalcaribbeanblog.com slash events. Um, so yeah, Bergen, go back to your question. At some point this week, um, it could be, usually what happens, Brogan, is it gets loaded in the system. Like, you, you start seeing some cruises maybe on the website. People call in or enable to book it. Then it appears on the website, and like a day later, Royal Caribbean announces something. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Keith, did you notice any good sales for Black Friday? You know, that's a good question, Keith. I don't know about you guys. What, did anybody find any great deals on Black Friday? It was not as lucrative as I was hoping for. Uh, definitely the better deals were on the cruise planner side. You know, if you're buying like, you know, drink packages, I think Wi-Fi in particular, if you're buying an internet drink package combo, it was a better deal than if you were buying it um, uh, a la carte, if you will. Um, that, I think some people noticed th those kind of promos. But beyond that, cruise fair is the thing we all had pretty good deals already, which isn't a bad thing, by the way. I mean, we shouldn't be upset that we're not getting the lowest possible prices out there. You know, it, it's funny because we see all these promos we're like, oh man, you know, it's exciting, but you know, cruise fares are never going to be priced like, you know, big screen TVs and Best Buy, right? It's never going to be, you know, uh, crazy cheap, really low price, uh, you know, bottom barrel. They, they can't do that. It's not how it works. Um, and in a lot of cases, I think we all kind of saw this this week, is we already had the great prices there. So, Mervyn George with the super chat. Wow, the alerts are really behind. There they are. Oh my God. Like, I gotta, why is the size so small? I know, I know. There's a joke behind that. Uh, Mervyn, do you know when Royal Caribbean put their December 2022 sailings on sale? Usually it would have been released by now, but as you know, only till October 2022. It's a good question, Mervyn. Um, right now, the deployment schedule is pretty limited. Royal Caribbean has not shared much about that. Um, they released Alaska for summer. They released some Caribbean, longer Caribbean sailing, seven night primarily, some shorter ones, um, for, for summer as well. And Europe is coming for summer 2022, Mervyn. So we know that. But obviously, that doesn't answer your question as to when will the other cruises and itineraries and what not be released. And it is not clear yet um, what the what the answer is. Um it, they haven't announced it. it. If it's not coming in the fall, it'll be coming in the spring, Mervin. And I suspect with a lot of the uh, unknowns currently with, you know, the state of resuming cruises and everything, I think they're maybe kind of waiting things out a little bit to see what goes on right there. Uh, Kyle Mixel, I saw that Royal Caribbean offers vacation package. 
with Universal Studios. Do you think they do the same with the American Dream in New Jersey? It's only a half-hour drive from New Jersey, New York City port. I mean, they could, but they don't offer it right now, Kyle. Um, the deal that Royal Caribbean offers, the combo package with, with Universal, is an option that is out there. Um, but it is only out there. That's because Universal and Royal Caribbean teamed up together. Oh this is, that's God. kind of the, how that works. Kim Oakland with the super chat. Man, you guys have been the alert to work tonight. Kim, sorry, with an epic super chat. Oh, holy moly, Kim. Got our Norway shore searches booked with some nice discounts on Black Friday. That is awesome. Wow, so great to hear that. Um, <laughs> Tony Diaz, we're just sidestepping that. Jeffrey Salzberg says, hoping to get back to, hoping to go back to back freedom, then Vision San Juan, waiting until I can book some flights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, dude. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Donna Hines says, can you book back to back? I was told no. There is no rule, no protocol by, that has been announced yet anyway, by Royal Caribbean, the CDC, or the Healthy Sail Panel that prohibit back-to-back -back sailings, period. It is not in. It is not listed in any Royal Caribbean rule, any Healthy Sail protocol. It's not listed. There's no prohibition against it in the uh, 40 pages of the conditional sale order. I know that some people have been talking about that. Uh, I'm aware that there's um, uh, certain some people who have said that they've heard that as a rule. I don't know where they're getting it from. Perhaps some cruise lines have that, but not Royal Caribbean anyway. So, hope that makes sense. Um, Ron Ladowski, when you realize that your cruise price is lower than the current cruise prices, you can see that Matt is correct when he says book earlier, book early for a guaranteed low cruise fare. It's the best overall strategy, bar none. No question about it, Ron. And good to see you, my friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Barbara Hawkins probably won't say, but will Allure be sailing on February 7th? Um, Barbara, I know as much as you do about that. I mean, anything's possible, but we simply don't know. So, yeah. Uh, Angela Roman is here. Good to see you, Angela. Thanks for your videos. Very informative and helpful. Thank you. Arizzi TV says, how excited were you after seeing the Odyssey sailing from the construction yard was hyped? Yes. Yes. I love it. I was, that was like, I mean, that was talking about a great Saturday morning because there was like no warning it was going to happen. She just started sailing out there and, oh my God. And, wow, and a super chat from Angela. Thank you, Angela. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, you guys are way too kind tonight. Um, but Arisa, yeah, when I woke up on Saturday morning and there were some photos and it's a beautiful looking ship. I really, really love the look of Odyssey of the Seas. I am going on record. Mark the time and the date, everybody. I, Matt Hodgeberg, do solemnly swear that the big, the giant Odyssey of the Seas name looks amazing. I love it. Yes. Go big or go home representing right hey ron snyder welcome so thank you again angela for that super chat very kind of you javon is here hello javon welcome um yes yeah, steve says travel agents have been saying people can't book back to back at both cruises or more than seven nights total that's not a rule i mean that could be a cruise line rule steve but that is not a cdc rule it's not in the conditional sale order it's not a royal caribbean rule and it's certainly not a rule in the healthy sale panel protocols now again I am not saying that some other cruise line may have that as their rule. That could be very well the case, but, um, you know, do you guys remember, remember the movie Jerry Maguire? Show me the money. Like, to me, it's like, I, I got to see it in print. I haven't seen it. It could very well happen, but I have not seen anything related to that. So, Ashley Bryant says, do you think we will hear about the state of January cruises this week? I would have thought it would come out already. I So, the answer to your question um uh, Ashley, yes, absolutely. I hope so. I can't believe it's gone on this long. I suspect Thanksgiving holiday not making things easier on anybody. But uh, that being said, I was, I, I mean, every day we go here and I'm still surprised it hasn't dropped um, because I think realistically, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure it's really going to January cruises are going to happen because of course they need test sailings. Like this is a, this is the government procedure that's going on there. So yeah, I'm not sure, but Mike Pastore loves the Odyssey logo. Yeah. See, you get that, right? Love that. Dennis Orman, do you think Royal Caribbean will require vaccine before letting us on board? That's a really good question. You know, initially I was like, no way, dude. Like, that's not a thing. But I think that could be a thing. I don't know, first and foremost. I don't know more than anybody out there. Um, but there definitely seems to be a wave of people, or not people, of companies kind of moving in that direction. So we'll have to wait and see 
how that works. I certainly could. It wouldn't surprise me at this point to see it, but um, it's definitely something we're seeing some governments and some other companies. I know Qantas Airlines is exploring uh, that as well. Matthew Smith with the super chat. Thank you, Matthew. Hi, Matt. Thanks as always. Where are the combo drinks and Wi-Fi packages on the cruise planner? Unable to find them on the UK one. Um, you just go to the drink packages uh, page and you will see them usually if they're there. If they're offered, you'll see them there. So you'll see the regular drink package. You'll see the combo deal. It should be over there, Matthew. Oh, my God. Yeah, come on, Alf. Catch up with it. Why is this thing? Hold on a second. Oh, I see the problem. Ah, okay. I figured out the uh, the issue with the sizing. So we should be good going forward after I uh, uh, clear this out here. There we go. Okay. But yeah, Matthew, if you're not seeing it, I mean, it's possible it's not being offered, but um, it's kind of surprising that it wouldn't be, but check the beverages section. So Susan Linens was supposed to be, and thank you again, Matthew, uh, and great name, by the way. <laughs> Susan was supposed to be sailing Odyssey this Friday. Oh, I know, right? I was supposed to be on Odyssey as well uh, earlier in November. It, it stinks, guys. It stinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlos is here. What's up, Carlos? Good to see you, buddy. Any info on possible later boarding times? There's been nothing announced by Royal Caribbean. You know, I wrote on RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com a couple months ago that some people were seeing later check-in times via the Royal Caribbean app, but we haven't gotten, like, a firm answer on yes or no, will the boarding times be altered in any way? So we still have to wait and see on that. Um, we have we have uh, some, I, I, get, I don't know if it's circumstantial evidence, but we certainly have some pointers, hints that maybe it will be, but it's not, like, confirm that it's definitely going to happen. So, um, let's see here. Jason Peterson, what's going on, dude? Welcome. Hold on, Jason, I need a drink and I'm going to read your comment. Uh, Jason bought his drink package for the Harmony Group cruise during the cruise planner sale. Uh, Becky, you know, if you don't mind, uh, if you can help me out with that drink package, you know, put it on the company credit card, your company credit card. That'd be great. <laughs> She's looking at her like, what are you talking about? <laughs> She's going to write back, new phone, who dis? Uh, Jess wants to know, will check-in times be enforced? You know, in Singapore, the answer is yes. Now, again, does Singapore mean what we're going to see here? We don't know yet. Um, but we do know that people that have cruises coming up um, on Quantum of the Seas have gotten an email that, told, that has informed them that if they arrive outside of their check-in time, they will not be allowed in at that time it's in order to stagger people. So, yeah. Jan, I thought it was worth a try. Maybe it'll work. Maybe I'll get one. Mark the Shark, what's up, dude? Uh, 106 to E2. What are your thoughts on the newest ship? Quant uh, Odyssey of the Seas looks awesome. Dude, I'm digging the big name. I really like the fact uh, that it, it is monstrously large. It's, to me, number one, it's clean. It's not like they put it there and they have, like, clouds and unicorns and rainbows and, no. It's just a natural evolution of the name. It's not anything, you know, different. It's just larger. And I love that it's loud. It's proud. Yeah. But at the same time, it's it's a clean design. I think it fits well. Um, I, I think that just like cruise ships, you know, that people, you know, say, well, people say, you know, the name is too big, right? People say that about cruise ships. Well, that ship is sovereign of the seas. That's way too big. Why do we need a cruise ship that large, right? You just get used to it, guys. I'm I'm digging it. I like it. Uh, I, I really, really uh, think it's a great idea. Uh, Becky says, I've been patiently waiting for the sailing, but the cruise planner sale made me more anxious. It's going to happen soon. Uh, Richard wants to know, is La, is La Romana a new port for Royal Caribbean? You didn't see a lot of excursions for it. Yes. In the Dominican, it is. Yeah. Royal Caribbean traditionally doesn't really offer many, if at all, excursions to the Dominican Republic. Uh, let's see here. Paul Lean, tell me more about anti-COVID protocols. Good question. You know, the cruise industry, but let's, let's back up a second. Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Line formed what's called the Healthy Sail Panel. And the Healthy Sail Panel crafted, the, the, the Healthy Sail Panel is, is, is um, a group of epidemiologists, scientists, and go, for, government, some former, some still current government officials who said, who were tasked with guys and gals, Figure out how we can make cruising safe. How can we operate a cruise during the pandemic safely? Like, what kind of changes do we need to have? And the Healthy Sail Panel came up with 74 recommendations. These 74 recommendations have been adopted by the cruise industry, including Royal Caribbean, 
And right now, Royal Caribbean is in the process of internalizing that. But we know that there are going to be certain things that are going to be coming our way, like obviously wearing face masks, temperature checks before the cruise, after the cruise, during the cruise, enforced social distancing, limited capacity on the ships, using um, uh, contactless uh, methods of, of, of uh, communication on board, such as using uh, Muster 2.0. So instead of going to a Muster drill, we have to stand around with a bunch of people closely packed. You're using your app to do it. You can open your door on some ships with your Royal Caribbean app. You can order food via a digital menu on your through the app as well, and a variety of other things, uh, enhanced HVAC systems, more medical staff, expanded medical facilities on board. I mean, you can go out. There's a lot of information out there, uh, Paul, in about that. Um, but it's it's that's just what I share is the tip of the iceberg in terms of these new protocols that'll be there. Um, Jamie says, after selling a couple of the Wasted Class ships, will it be a letdown selling a smaller ship? No, it's not a letdown. It'll be different. That, that's that that's definitely the case, but not a letdown. You know, my wife, um, uh, who asked Jamie, my wife loves a Wasted Class ships. I think if it was up to her, she'd probably only sail on them. But, you know, she likes big ships. She cannot lie. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but when you go on a smaller ship, and smaller is a relative term, of course, because really every other ship is smaller, right? Freedom class, Voyager class. You know, if they have a real promenade on board, I think you will find it very... Oh, my God. There we are. Uh, very, very similar in experience. Chris H. with the super chat. Thank you, Chris. Any idea about how Royal Caribbean will handle the double points on an early 2020 cruise if canceled? I think you mean 21. And one has to rebook after for another date. You know, this has been a, this has been a good question, Chris. And I mean, the short answer is we don't know. However, based on how it is written right now, I don't think it's going to be uh, honored. The, the, the wording of the double points are clearly states it's for cruises that sail in 2021 that are booked in 2020. That's the rule. So clearly 2022 wouldn't count. Um, could that change, Chris? Of course it could change. But as of right now, yeah. Uh, Brian McNichols, here what's up, Brian? I refuse to cruise unless I get one of those famous Hotchberg hugs. I think my kids will hug you. I think that's 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 possible. Kind of creepy, but you know, it's all right. It's Brian McNichols. Uh, Carlos, is a large ship to Alaska a negative versus a smaller ship? No, the ship itself I don't think matters as much. Um, the issue really you're talking about is itinerary. Bigger ships tend to do less of the exotic ports, if you want to call it that, in Alaska, than the smaller ships do. Um, so I wouldn't look at it purely as, you know, it's a negative bigger. I mean, still going to Juneau. You're still going to Skagway. You're still doing the inner pa the inside passage. Uh, you're not missing out on that. And if anything else, you're gaining, obviously, more facilities and more dining options. That's a good thing, in my opinion. Um, so the, really, the, the issue is uh, more, th to me, the question is, you know, are you interested in going to deeper into Alaska? And then for that, you need the smaller ships because only those can do those itineraries. So, uh, Becky says, I love the Oasis Aquanta class ship. Heck, right now, I love all Royal Caribbean ships. Guys, breaking news Becky Menken, ready to book Empress of the Seas. Love that. Love that. Michael S., does this software allow you to have virtual backgrounds? Uh, yes. Yes. The answer is yes. Um, I have to get my green screen set up and all that, but yes, that could happen. Absolutely. I think it'd be a little, I think people would like, it would be more of a distraction than anything else, Michael. I know what you're going at. It's not a bad idea, but I think it's going to be a little too, it's going to, it's going to be more of an annoyance than a, more of a hindrance and a help, if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Becky, by the way, do we need to start a GoFundMe for the back wall? No, we just need Matt to look at some darn furniture and measure things. I actually proposed going to Ikea this weekend. I got shot down on that proposal. So, uh, Michelle DeWitt, thank you for the super chat. Matt, come on, man. Bring back the bookcases. All right, all right. I will look into ordering a new bookcase, all right? That will be my goal to uh, to do that. Oh, my God. I know, right, Homer? Right, Mich Thank you for the super chat right there. Jess wants to know, when will the rest of the 2022 itineraries be released available for booking? Um, we're going to get Europe summer, summer 2022 Europe this week at some point, uh, Jess, but beyond that, Royal Caribbean has not announced it yet. So if it's not going to be this fall, like in the next couple of weeks, then I would say we're waiting for the spring around March, April timeframe. So, 
Uh, let's see here. Kelly wants to know, will we sail in January? I mean, no one really knows, but I kind of, every passing day, Kelly, I'm kind of a little less likely it's going to happen purely because, of course, in order for any cruise line to sail, they need proper government approval. They need to operate uh, test cruises. And for all those things to occur, you need time. And I think they've run out of time for the January cruise. Again, I could be, I could be completely wrong on this. And you guys know, I really don't do uh, predictions because I'm so bad at it right there. So, uh, Jerry, I, Hey Matt, I just missed going on the freedom of the seas. Do we know when they're going to be starting back up? No, not yet. Except for one ship, Jerry tomorrow, quantum of the seas will indeed sail tomorrow. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And Marvin Bailey with a super chat. Thank you, Marvin. I don't, why is the alert so far behind? I'm not sure. When will Royal Caribbean start canceling January and February cruises? Unknown, my friend. We're all, I wish I had the inside track on this. I wish you'd be like, hey guys, I know when it's going to happen. Oh my God. Thank you. I wish I could tell you the inside track, but yeah, I don't know. I wish I did, but there's no way to know, unfortunately. We're just going to. Oh my God. Another one back to back super chats. My goodness. So Marvin, thank you for the super chat. Uh, the answer is, I don't know. I would have expected it already, um, but here we are. So I'm not sure on that. And Virginia Swan with the super chat. Thank you, Virginia. Appreciate that. Will Vision be updated? Looking a bit, or a bit tired. Number one, no the upgrades to all ships are going to be on hold for, until further notice, like enhancements, upgrades. That's not going to happen. Number two, Vision class ships are a little older. I mean, you're not going to get, I don't know what, I don't know what you're expecting, quite frankly. But, um, but, but, you know, at some point you can only upgrade ships so many times. You can't really do a whole lot there. Certainly every five years, every ship goes in for a technical upgrade. That's like bringing your car in for an oil change, getting some work done under the hood. You know, if, uh, Don Goldstein is in here, I'm sure he can regale you with many stories about that. Um, but that being said, um, in terms of like upgrades, I mean, they will do work necessarily to keep up with the ship upkeep, but I think you're angling at Matt. Are they going to you know, renovate the ship in a sense, like a, like an episode of, of, of property brothers where they gut the place and bring it back. No, that's not going to happen. That's just, it's just not going to be the, the thing right there. Richard M3 obligatory. Is my cruise going to be canceled question? Hey, listen, hopefully Richard, hopefully we're getting closer to the end of that being a thing, right? So, ah, Nicholas is not tomorrow today. Sing that's right. In Singapore, it's already December one. So yeah, this whole time zone. I'm not thinking fourth dimensionally, but tomorrow here, but today now. Yeah, th this feels like that 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 scene from Spaceballs when they're looking at the instant replay and they're like, what was that? That was then. When's then? You know, that was now. When are we? We're now. When will then be now? Soon. <laughs> oh, goodness. Becky Mengus says, FYI, Ask the MEI Mind Hive and our advisors report no issues booking Royal Caribbean back to back so far. Thank you, Becky, for that. And that just proves again what we've been saying here. Um, that guys don't believe everything you read on the or hear on the internet. I know where that particular report came from, but again, there's no indication that's a Royal Caribbean thing at all. So thank you, Becky, for for double checking on that. Really do appreciate that. So always remember with these policies, guys, you have to always take with a grain of salt. Even you know, when I post things, I understand that too, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Jenna, love that movie. Yes. KB with the super chat. Thank you, KB. Hey, Matt, many thanks for your post today regarding cruises resuming in the UK and Europe. If they need volunteers for test cruising, I'm there. Yeah, so the... the oh, my God. Thank you again, KB. The plot thickens. I don't know if you guys saw this on RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Uh, evidently there could be test sailings in the UK, which is not terribly surprising, but it looks like maybe you Brits, maybe you, uh, uh, Frenchies out there and, and Germans and Italians might have a chance to go on a test cruise. They didn't mention the fact that I think they specifically mentioned Southampton. So perhaps just the Brits out there, but you never know. You never know. So Kelly Hardy is here from MEI travel. Good to see you, Kelly. Hope you're well. Hope you're, uh, I don't know if you're still on the coast or you're over in Universal now, but good to see you. Ahmed is here. I have no questions today, but wanted to appreciate your efforts. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you being here, saying hello. And guys, it's okay if you don't have a question. If you just want to come out here, hang out, talk about Tony Diaz, have some fun. That's what I'm down here for. And of course, at least say hello. I love knowing 
everyone who is in our chat right now. Jay Wanderman is here. What's up, dude? Every role of ship has their own personality. I agree on that. Terry Butler, I have two cruises in January, one nine day in the first part and seven days later in the month, will they sail? I don't know, Terry. Royal Caribbean has not announced any change to that, as you obviously know. Um, I think you have to be realistic that uh, it's it's unlikely, but listen, man, I, I don't know what I don't know. And I don't want to speak on Royal Caribbean's behalf, certainly, because I don't work for the company. I don't have any more insight than you guys have on this. It is just, we'll know when we know. Ex-Captain Mike, what do you think about the must-have, what do you think about ha must having a vaccination to cruise? Yeah, we talked a little bit about that earlier today, but I think it's worth mentioning. You know, obviously, I, I think about a week or two ago, I was like, no way. That, that, no way that'll be a thing. But it seems like there's a lot of momentum behind that. I'm just not sure how they would be able to prove it, obviously, because you can't be walking around with, like, you know, a piece of paper, like, you know, um, you know, I have... I have a vaccine there. This paper says so. Like, I mean, talk about, I mean, in the age of Photoshop, I mean, not that most people will do that, but you know, you got to think that there's that possibility. Anyway, I digress. Um, you know, there has to be a more of a verifiable and easy to ver um, uh, demonstrate way of doing that. Whether that's uh, people have been talking about maybe a digital passport that allows you to have that in there. Don't know. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's an intriguing possibility but again, it's still, I'm not sure that Royal Caribbean would go to the lengths of saying if you don't have a vaccine, you can't go on the cruise. I'm not sure. But again, I think it's a little too early to know exactly what to expect right there. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, it's just, it is what it is. Uh, I, I guess is the best way to, to say that. So uh, Hudson says, can kids be in the test cruises? No, Hudson, you have to be at least 18 years old. Marvin Bailey, do you know where Symphony of the Seas is right now? Is it in Miami? Um, you can check like websites like Marine Traffic. All you do is type in Symphony of the Seas, Marine Traffic. There's a bunch of these websites that all track all this stuff. And Symphony right now is, no, near Grand Bahama. She's off the coast. She's heading, she's drifting <laughs> is the official term that they're using. Brett Chafee is here. Hello, Brett. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome. Randy Patrick also in the house. Welcome, Randy. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Kenny, Kenny Ole. Hope I got that right. What is what is so different between a quantum ultra class and a regular quantum class? That's a really good question. You know what? We really don't know. We really don't. I'll be honest. We don't know. Um, it's bigger. That's one undeniable difference. It's kind of a, a little bit of a stretched out version. But beyond that, uh, I'm not aware of anything tremendously different. I mean, you know, some obvious ones, right? Entertainment is different, but that's true of every Royal Caribbean ship, so that's not really helpful. Um, I mean, they both have C-plexes. They both have a flow rider. They both have... I mean, the pool deck is noticeably different. Um, it's a little more open. A little There's a little less, you know, formalized structure there. They've gone for that lime and coconut look to it. Um, but it still remains to be seen exactly uh, what will be the major differences. Because... The first Quantum Ultra class ship, Spectrum of the Seas, what went to China, and she's what they call in, uh, probably not a, a, P, a P, uh, what's that called? Anyway, it doesn't matter. The term is called Asiafied. It's a, it's a term for what they, when a cruise ship is designed for the Asian cruise market. And in that regard, uh, I'm not sure we can use that as an example of what to expect here on the States. Oh my God. There we go. So another super chat. My, you guys are amazing tonight. Holy moly. Thank you. 106 the E2 with the super chat. Thank you, my friend. Why Royal Caribbean and not Carnival or something other cruise line? You know, that's a great question. 106. Um, really what it boils down to for me anyway, number one, subjective. It's it's a personal choice, okay? But I will tell you this. I think that um, you know, there are cruise lines that are cheaper than Royal Caribbean, but I feel like I don't feel you get as much for your money. Um, there are other cruise lines that cost more than you there are other cruises that give you more than Royal Caribbean but those will probably cost you more. I think Royal Caribbean is in that sweet spot of what you pay versus what you get. And, and I really love how much of an industry leader they are in terms of innovations and, um, and, and, and technology. Um, those kind of things really speak to me as a consumer. And it seems to me that being going on Royal Caribbean not only jives with what I'm looking for in a cruise, but it's also like... It, their, their, for lack of a better word, their ecosystem is certainly exactly what I'm looking. I think they're moving. They're always moving in the right direction there, um, to, for the most part. Anyway, they're, they're human after all. But nonetheless, um, I love where they go with their with their with with their products, and it really I think is a great family option. Uh, ex Captain Mike, how long can cruise lines last in the industry without starting back up? 
Um, the, most Wall Street analysts have said they have enough money to go through the rest of 2021, um, certainly. So they, I think they, most estimates go to about a year from now or so, give or take. And, of course, that could still change if they get more money. So, And by the way, that estimate assumes absolutely no income, um, which they are in right now. But, you know, if Quantum restarts and some other ships are able to resume here um, sometime next year, that changes that equation. So, uh, Ben, what is your next personal cruise booked? My next cruise is, well, it's Brilliance of the Seas over MLK weekend. Uh, I'm not so sure that's actually going to happen, but that's what I got booked right now. Uh, Paul Somerville, what's up, dude? As far as cruising with a passport, is there a rule that has to be valid for 90 days past your return date? Um, some countries, yes. Uh, Cuba is a notable one. Can't go to Cuba anyway right now. Russia uh, is another one. Um, there may be a couple others, but Cuba was the most noticeable one. But like Bahamas, nobody cares. Mexico, nobody cares. It's just certain countries. Uh, Jess, what will be the check-in protocol past co post COVID? Not sure yet. I have to wait and see on that one. I think a lot of testing at the very least. Uh, Jay, will all ships in the fleet get air filtration upgrades? I believe so. But again, waiting for Royal Caribbean to confirm all the changes there. They haven't announced anything yet. Um, outside there, there's, they've announced what they're doing for Singapore with quantum of the seas, but you know, there's definitely some Singapore centric things in there. Like you have to download an app that the Singaporean government requires for contact tracing. Obviously, that will not be the case here in the U.S. So there's still some leeway there. But based on what I'm seeing from what Royal Caribbean is, is, is saying, I think that it's very likely we're going to be seeing very similar protocols um, across the board. They're taking the Royal thing is very seriously. They're not trying to cut corners in this by any means. So and let's see here. So Kelly's got an interesting scenario. Booked Odyssey in Rome for the Maiden Transatlantic to Florida on 1028 CDC order ends 11 1 odyssey will still be in europe during the time will not arrive until to florida until the 11th what's your take yeah, my my take is i don't know that's good this is an interesting scenario i think it's just too early to know kelly and i think that if you were to ask royal caribbean and if you were to have them here and pump them full of truth serum i think they would just simply tell you we're gonna wait and see we're gonna see what happens it's a long time from now we'll cross that bridge when we need to but we don't need to cross it today i know it's not the answer you're looking for because you're booked on it you want to make plans but yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Brandon Doherty wants to know, what's the best ship or class for teens, 14 to 16, in my opinion? Oh, no question. Quantum class. Quantum, quantum ultra class. You want that. You'll never see them in a good way because they'll be busy hanging out over there. Quantum class. Do that. Thank me later. So, appreciate that. Uh, let us see here. Yvonne, is Royal Caribbean has a family educational scholarship plan for the crew members' family? I really want to know. I have no idea. I'm not very familiar with what happens on the work side, the crew member side. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, so I'm, unfortunately I can't answer that question. Uh, Tank Top Tiger, great name, great alliteration. Do you know Quantum for Singapore Sailings will provide star class amenities? Uh, my understanding, I could be wrong on this. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Boy, where's Sabrina when you need her? I don't think Quantum ever got the, the star class um, because she was always in Asia and they never added it over there. I could be wrong on that. Um, but that was my recollection. Again, could be hundred percent wrong, but I believe she never got star class because she was always in China or Asia cruises for that matter. And they never did that over there. Um, and I don't believe it's been added there. So, uh, Kenny old Disney cruise line versus Royal Caribbean, Royal Caribbean. Disney is just so ridiculously overpriced. I mean, there's overpriced and then there's overpriced and Disney is way overpriced. So Royal Caribbean all the way. Not to mention other things, but that alone is reason enough. Uh, Steve, what are the chances of our mid-January 17 cruise out of Puerto Rico? Oops, sorry. I don't know. Um, I, there, in order to give you chances, Steve, I would have to have criteria um, from, from the cruise line. I'd have to have some sort of basis, right? There's no basis. There's too many variables and not enough information. Um, I think all January cruises, Steve, are suspect at this point because... I, I, quite frankly, I think that um, the time is not on, on your side for January cruises in terms of getting CDC approval. Uh, I could be totally wrong on that. For all I know, tomorrow they'll be like, hey, we got the approval. We're good to go. And I'd be like, wow, that's a big surprise. Uh, so don't know there. So is quad about 100% capacity for the restart? No, 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 no. Yeah, Ben, it's a good question. Um, So if you want more details, we have that at royalcreamblog.com on the homepage right now. But 
Um, Quantum Singapore's government requires that the cruises on Quantum, until further notice, are no more than 50% capacity. In fact, the first cruise will only be at about a thousand passengers. So, um, it's yeah. So they won't be at full capacity for quite a long time. Um, Becky says DCL is certainly going for the luxury market, relying on the unique brand you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, the problem for me, Becky, is not they're going after the luxury market. Is they're charging luxury market prices for a contemporary line because their their product is not luxury. I'm sorry, it's not. You've been in their suites. You've been in Las Vegas. You've been in Royal Caribbean Star Class Suites. You've been, you know, at, at fancy hotels. Disney's product is not luxury, especially when you're paying, you know, for, uh, you know, Alaska in a balcony, a veranda, sorry, veranda room, you know, uh, tens of thousands of dollars for a seven-night cruise. A, a veranda, not a suite, veranda. That's crazy. It's just, it, you're paying for the name. I get that. I'm, I'm with you on that. It's just... They're, it's not a luxury product. They're just going for rich people who want to, are willing to pay for the name. That I agree with. But, you know, that's why they, they lost me a long time as a customer because it's just it's crazy. I used to cruise on Disney. That was my first cruise line. I cruised with Becky Macon from MEI Travel on a Disney cruise ship many a time. We had a great time. I loved it. But the pricing went from like, eh, it's a little more to like, whoa, what are they thinking? And it's only gotten worse. So, uh, Kenny K, Disney's worth every penny with small children. Other than that, I will take Rel. I still think Royal does a better job with small kids. I'm sorry. I I, I think they they get a they get the benefit of the doubt. No offense, no offense, Kenny. Uh, I think they get the benefit of the doubt with the fact that it's Disney, the name, the characters, blah blah. But Royal Caribbean's uh, uh, Adventure Ocean nursery programming is really really good. I have as as I, having I have children of the system, products of the system, who have gone through it from six months until wherever they are now in Adventure Ocean. And I'm telling you, man, I would not have any hesitation to recommend Royal Caribbean to any family with any kids of any age. Um, I, I think that a lot of people, a lot of times, Disney, oh, it's Disney, so they must be great for young kids. And they're not bad. I'm not saying they're bad for young kids. But I don't know what family thinks, I'm going to go spend that much money on Disney when I can spend a fraction of that for Royal Caribbean and not compromise on the quality. You know? That's important to me. That, like, you know... It's, it's Think of it like cars, in, in, in a sense. It's not quite the same thing. But, you know, you can say out there, you know, Matt, you know, for your family, you really should go buy a Rolls Royce. Why should I get a Rolls Royce? Because it's the best car on the market. It'll keep everybody safe. Luxury, you know, it, it's, but, it, but it's crazy pricing, right? I can get a Volvo. I can get a Chevy. And it's going to be a much, it still offer a great experience. Not quite the luxurious one, but, you know, it, it's about value. And to me, the value proposition from Disney versus Royal is just ridiculous bad that is um so that's why that's the case so it's, it's good and I, I went off a little bit of tangent there kenny i think it's a good point thank you for bringing it up um so nwo dispatch what's up buddy welcome uh jamie miranda says royal will always be royal there you go i like that um mary and if passengers are limited to 50 percent capacity will all restaurants and facilities be open uh, basically, yeah, there are some things that can't be open, Marion. Um, as an example, karaoke can't be offered because of COVID. What are you doing karaoke? You're, you're, you're yelling. You're not breathing heavily. Maybe you are, but you're, you know, you're expending your, 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 your projecting not only your voice, but also your, your things. But in terms of dining, um, there's only a couple things that they mentioned will not be open. Laser tag, uh, karaoke. I'm not aware of any changes to dining. Uh, initially, the Windjammer dinner will not be open. They don't need to do it for dinner. They'll have it for breakfast and lunch, obviously. But, um, yeah. Uh, Andy, I'm curious. Are there ways to cruise in Royal where numbers of under-18s is minimized? Um, to some extent, you go on the longer sailings, transatlantics, you'll find very few kids on there. I mean, the longer the sailing, the less likely families are willing to go on it. So, you know, Panama Canal, transatlantics. Trans-Pacifics, you'll find very few kids on there. But it's a, it's a family cruise line, bottom line. I mean, you can't get past that point. That is very much Royal Caribbean's DNA. So it's, you know, <laughs> it's it's to me, it's akin to saying, you know, oh, can I go to Walt Disney World when there are no kids there? Probably not. I mean, you can find times where there might be less kids, but it's always going to be a family destination, and Royal Caribbean will always be a family cruise line. Or not. That's just the bottom line, so. Um, how will the quest happen? That's a good question, NWO. I have to wait and see on that one. 
Uh, Sari says, for DCL, you can get reasonable prices during school time, but not everyone can get their kids off of school. And I would you're right. There are obviously, just like Royal Caribbean, there are ebbs and flows in prices. But even at the lowest prices, Sari, if you were to compare that price to a comparable room on a probably a more superior ship in terms of amenities and things like that in Royal Caribbean, the value, I mean, Disney's, the problem with Disney is the pricing is just, you're not paying like 10% more or 20% more. You're paying two to three times more. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Um, and that's something I, 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 that's just to me for families. Can't, can't justify it. If you got the money for it, more power to you, dude. Absolutely. I'm not here to tell you you shouldn't go on Disney. I'm here to tell you I don't think it's a good idea. It's not a good value. And that's why I don't recommend it. But, you know. Uh, ben, what are the chances of an outbreak on one of the first cruises? Uh, if you're talking about Singapore, I would think it'd be pretty low. Again, I could be completely wrong. I mean, no one knows, obviously. But the system is in place to mitigate it. Number two, you, the reason why I think Singapore has a very good chance is Singapore has been cut off from the rest of the world for a long time. Uh, these cruises are only open to people from Singapore. They're three and four night cruises. They visit no ports. So you're talking about a populace that is self-contained, a place where if you spit gum on the sidewalk, they throw you in jail. Uh, they're taking this very seriously outside of the whole cruising stuff. And then on top of that, you've got, you know, you're, you're, this is not like other places where you have, you know, many, many more cases. So I think the chances are pretty good. Again, who knows, right? But um, it, it's on their side right there. So, um. NWO, be, be honest, is there a chance we're going to go bankrupt stockholder here? I mean, I think any company, every company has a chance of going bankrupt. That's There is no company that's bankruptcy-proof, right? Um, uh, but I, they have a lot of runway left to go. They, Royal Caribbean has a lot of runway left to go. Most Wall Street analysts estimate that Royal Caribbean has enough cash on hand to operate with no income for pretty much all of 2021. So you've got a lot more time to go before that case. Uh, uh, Jess was asking me Carnival or Royal. I've never cruised on Carnival, but I know what I like and I like Royal Caribbean. So, uh, there you go. Uh, where's my Monopoly set? It's in the other room. It's, it's, it's in safe hands right there. Uh, Jordan, where's the best spot at Coco Key? Well, I would say in a cabana. I love cabanas at Coco Key. If you're not getting a cabana, it's okay too. I love the Oasis Lagoon pool. I love the Oasis Lagoon pool, poolside bar, music playing, splashing around, man. Sign me up for that any day of the week. Love that place. Yes. Yes. Um, let's see. Got time for another question or two, guys, and then kind of skedaddle on out of here. It's already been almost an hour. My goodness. Um, let's see. Brogan, best thing to do in Falmouth, Jamaica. You know, I haven't found anything I love there, Brogan. If I were to go back tomorrow, I would probably book and try again. It's been a number of years since I've been there. But get a day pass to the Hilton Rose Hall uh, Resort. It's an all-inclusive day pass you can get there. I generally liked it, but again, it's been a number of years since I've been there. I've heard some good things about Doctor's Cave Beach. I've never been there myself, but I've heard reasonably good things, so I might check that out as well. Um, both of those are not through Royal Caribbean. Uh, let's see here. Kawani Cunningham, if you, the U.S. fails to let cruises restart here, China might just make an offer and take all the ships there. I mean, I don't know that they'd be able to move all 20-some-odd ships in the fleet over there. But, yeah, I mean, listen, there are the CDC controls cruises from the U.S. And, by the way, the U.S. cruise market is the biggest one, so it's kind of hard to ignore that. But, yes, they could operate cruises still from other places, like Europe, like Australia, like China, and, of course, Singapore as well. So, yes, there's still options there, but North America is the is the giant. That's where you make your—that that's the bread and butter right there. That That's why it's so important. And this isn't— this isn't me being an American and being like, USA, USA. Like, it's not about that. It's just simply about dollars and cents. And North American cruisers, that's the the Caribbean is, it's in their name, right? The Caribbean is the their their, their backyard. So, um, NWA Dispatch, Margaritaville. I went to Margaritaville in Falmouth. I didn't, I, first of all, it's so expensive. It gets so crowded. I didn't love it. We did that one time. We were like, hey, let's do that. It's okay, but. It got too crowded, and the prices are ridiculous. I mean, you're in Jamaica. I'm not paying, you know, American prices for food and drinks. That's that's nuts. <laughs> but yet I do, so that's why we only went there once. Um. So anyway, uh, John Bennett, do you feel the Beach Club is worth the money 
is it that much better than the snack shack chicken sandwich? That's a great question, John. So John's talking about the Coco Beach Club at Coco Key. It's the uh, private beach club you have to pay extra to go to. I would say it is worth it for a couple of if if number one, you can get the price for under hundred dollars a day per person. Number one. Number two, if it is important to you, who asked me that question? John. John, if it's important to you to be somewhere exclusive, like do you find a lot of like value? Like, does it does it matter to you to be go somewhere where other people can't go? That you know, like that exclusivity. That matters to you? That's that's yes. Then it can be worth it. And number three. Yes, the food is really good. I mean, listen, I love the Snack Shack, but the uh, restaurant at the Cocoa Beach Club is like especially restaurant quality food. I mean, it is really good. So uh, it is, yeah, Andy says Beach Club is astounding. I agree. I went there. I paid $75 a person or $79 a person. I think it was 79 Worth every penny. Um, I wouldn't pay 120 or 150 or whatever some crazy prices I've seen. But it does matter to you. It matters if you value being in an exclusive place. For some people, the answer is yes. For others, no. And that's okay, too, because the rest of Coco Key is amazing. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of what you're looking for right there. Well, all righty, guys. Um, last question from Luke F. Because it's a good question. I was going to wrap it up. I think Luke's question is very good to end it on. How many days do you recommend for a first cruise? Seven nights. Seven nights. I think it's a good mix of sea days and port days. It's a, I know you're thinking, should I do a shorter cruise? Nope. It's over before you know it. Do a seven-night cruise. You'll thank me later on that one. It's definitely the way to go. So, guys, thank you again for so much for joining me here. I got to say some big thank yous to the Super Chats because there were so many today. My goodness. 106, thank you. KB in the UK, thank you. Virginia Swan, thank you. Marvin Bailey, thank you. Michelle, thank you for the Super Chat. Chris H, thank you. Matthew Smith, thank you. Angela Roman, thank you. Kim Oakland, as always, Kim. Boy, I owe you, like, uh, I think a small SUV at this point. Thank you, Kim. Mervin George, thank you. Brogan, thank you, my friend. Cruise Addicts, thank you. And Jan Fagan, thank you again for your support. Wowie, wow, wow. Oh, what a day. What a great start to my week. Thank you for joining me here. We're live every Monday. When we're not live, check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. There is plenty more Royal Caribbean news, information, fun, advice waiting for you at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. A lot happening in the cruise industry this week, guys. We've got Quantum of the Seas about to, I mean, they're probably boarding the ship at this point, probably another hour or so, but uh, Quantum restarting cruises in Singapore. We've got new European 2022 summer cruises on going on sale this week. Maybe the January cruises will be canceled and who knows what else could be announced, but we'll have all, uh, all for you at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Until then, guys, have a great rest of your week. Stay safe out there. Do something fun. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Bye, everybody.